Hi, welcome to the MadCenter.com. In this video, we want to look at an example in mechanics. Okay, um, it involves a vertical motion. Uh, this uh, a question like this will possibly appear in uh, paper four. Okay, the mechanics paper four of the CIE. And this example that we're going to talk about uh, is part of a question that appears in one of the A-level uh, mechanics uh, textbooks. Okay? Uh, the question that we're going to talk about is part of a larger question which appears in one of the A-level mechanics textbooks. Okay? So again, uh, it involves vertical motion and uh, we'll go through the solution uh, slowly. Now, first, the ideas. We have a particle P, okay? First we have the ideas in the question, then we'll talk about how we need to approach this. We have a particle P, which I've indicated here, okay? Is projected vertically upwards, okay? This particle P is projected vertically upwards, as you can see here, uh, from ground level and the speed of projection is 20 meter per second okay the speed of projection is 20 meter per second or if you like you can call it the velocity is 20 meter per second upwards okay the velocity is 20 meter per second upwards we can uh, we like to call this the initial velocity okay great so, in summary, we are going to project a particle P vertically upwards with a speed of 20 meters per second. And the question is asking us to find the time for which P's height above the ground is greater than 15 meters. Again, the question is asking us to find the time for which, very carefully, yeah, find the time for which P's height above the ground is greater than 15 meters. So, you'll be careful when you answer this question. Yeah? Okay, uh, there's a, a second part to it. Uh, you can uh, look it up in the textbook. Uh, you can uh, go to themathcenter.com. In my mechanics uh, section, I've talked about the second part as well. But here, let's talk about this idea. Let me draw the picture again. Okay, we have ground level and we have okay, the motion of this particle. Uh, we let fly with an initial speed of 20 meter per second. Okay? And what's going to happen? It's going to go up and it's going to come down. Now there is an assumption in vertical motion that it will go up and come down along the same straight line. But when we discuss a problem in a textbook, you know, when we discuss a problem on the board, we like to draw it like this so people get an idea. It will go up and it will come down. Okay? So, go up and come down. Okay? That's the motion. Now, they're asking you, find the time for which P's height above the ground is greater than 15 meters. So, why don't we call this 15 meters? Okay? So, if we call this 15 meters, it is above the ground, greater than 15 meters, from here, right up to here. Okay? P's height above the ground is greater than 15 meters, from here, right up to here. That's the idea. So, we want to know... How much time does that take to go from here to here? So let's call this A and let's call this B. So in our question, we asked to find what is the time it takes to it takes to get from A to B. Okay, good. So we will use S equals to U T plus half A T squared. We can use this constant acceleration formula because we are saying that the only resistance to motion is that due to gravity. Okay? 
So we have acting downwards, we have G will be 10 meter per second squared. Okay? And we are going to assume, okay, we are going to assume upwards as positive. That's a usual convention. That is why G becomes negative 10. Okay, so we're going to assume, let me underline that, upwards as positive. So, let's come back here. S equals to UT plus half AT squared. So, let's look at a vertical displacement of 15 meters. Okay, so let's write that down. What is U? They gave me 20. T plus a half. What is A? Negative 10. Okay. T squared. Okay. It's negative 10 because we are assuming upwards is positive. So U here is positive 20. Okay. And our displacement here is measured upwards is 15. So that's why this is negative 10. So now we have 15 equals 20t minus 5t squared. So let's clean this up. We have a quadratic equation. We have 5t squared minus 20 plus 15 equals to 0. Bring the 5t squared to, 5t squared to the left. So I have 5t squared minus 20t plus 15 equals to 0. Clean this up, divide by 5, we have t squared minus 4t plus 3 equal to 0. Okay, just dividing throughout by 5, t squared minus 20 divided by 5 is 4, 15 divided by 5 is 3. Let's factorize t minus 1, t minus 3 equal to 0. So we have t equals to 1, t equals to 3. We're almost done. So, t equals to 1, the particle is at A. t equals to 3, the particle is at B. Okay? When t equals to 1, the particle is at A. When t equals to 3, the particle is at B. Okay? So, therefore, to answer the question, the time for which P's height above the ground is greater than 15 meters will just be 3 minus 1 and you'll get two seconds. So for two seconds, okay, the piece or rather the particle's height above the ground is greater than 15 meters. That is this part of the journey takes two seconds and we are done.